verse 6. And all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And just for me, this one chapter here, and the subject will be, and the subject is going to be the formula for spiritual success. The formula for spiritual success. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your goodness, your most simply loving kindness. Father, please stir up the gift that you've given me, but let your anointing supersede any ability. And we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. You may be seated. In order for me to do this message justice, I just got to take a moment and observe you. I just got to take a moment and look at the vessel. Is that all right? Just let me look around for a minute. All right. What I see is a wonderful portrait of the life and times of the children of God. We may have different backgrounds. We have different backstories. We have different circumstances that, uh, that have brought us here together. And even though we have all that diversity, I believe that the one thing that we do have co in common is all of us strive to succeed in everything that we do. Any truth to that? I'm in a, am I in the right place? We try very hard to, and we do that knowing full well that we're going to meet obstacles that we're going to meet resistance, but in spite of that, we strive to succeed. Now, this started when we were very young. Think about it. How many of you remember when we were children how we talked about uh, if, if, if first you don't succeed, what we say? Try, try again, all right? And what about that, that slogan we picked up in the church? It says when we fall down, we got to pick ourselves up, brush ourselves off, and what? And try again, all right? And, and how many in here can remember the story about the little red engine? Anybody remember that? The little red engine that could? <laughs> it said, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, all right? I can do it, all right? I'm telling you, these are the types of things that we have that have been instilled in us for as long as we can remember. Now, succeeding is a good thing. There's nothing wrong with striving for success because success is a, it means to achieve something that you've intended, something that you desire, or something that you're attempting to do. So it is a very, very good thing to be able to do. So when we think about that, I want us to look at the text, get a closer look into the text here. But, uh, and we want to kind of, kind of go there. You, I want you to realize that any time that you're thinking about success, you probably know that the road to success is not easy. Would you agree? You know why? Because the road to success is not straight. There's bumps in the road. There's curves. There's potholes. There's loops. There's all kind of things that cause us to be able to have concern and can hold us back. So with that in mind, we as children of God have got to focus on three particular fundamentals to succeed. The first fundamental is self-determination. All right? And when you, you become self-determined, that means that you come to a point that you make a decision that I will succeed in, what my, in my goal. Are you with me? After self-determination, there is perseverance. Perseverance says, yes, I will establish to reach my goal, but in spite of all the obstacles that get in my way. And then the third and critical fundamental is you got to put your trust in a system. Now, can I spend a little bit of time here? I, I, the, the Spirit's pushed me to spend some time there, putting trust in a system. Because, see, a, a, a system is when you, when, you, when you come up with a method 
to do things or you come up with a set of procedures to do things. And when you do them, you have to do them in decency and, and in an order fashion and follow the principles that are laid out. And everybody knows any time that you give that a genuine chance, you have success. All right? Well, the problem with that is that we have a tendency to kind of want to do things on our own. Sometimes we may not want to listen <laughs> to somebody else. Sometimes we don't want any help in what we're doing. Sometimes we don't like to be told what to do or how to do it. Sometimes we'll even consider giving up or letting the situation fall apart because we don't like people looking over our shoulders. But the moment that we forget about all that, follow the instructions, we have success. When I look out at this congregation right now, I see a congregation full of success. Everybody in this room here represents success because everybody's good at something in here. Everybody's good at something, praise God. So it is very important that we realize that right now we look pretty good when it comes to, uh, to natural success. But my assignment today is not just to talk about natural success, but to talk about the formula of spiritual success. All right. So in order to do that, we've got to look into the scriptures and we've got to take a closer look. We've got to find some clues about spiritual success. All right. Now, let, I'll talk about a system here. What do you think? Th this is the one thing that holds us back from time to time. And y'all bear with me. I want to take a little bit of time. I don't want to rush this. One of the problems now, when we talk about a system, we all know how important it is to follow one. We all know how sometimes we have a tendency to, to get off the track a little bit. But what about in the spiritual realm? What's holding us back in the spiritual realm? Well, the thing that holds us back in the spiritual realm is that we get hung up, we get tied up, we get bottled up, we just get, get, get all ourselves all wrapped up in the belief syndrome. Can I talk about that? The belief syndrome. That means we focus on having a belief in God. And we believe that that's enough. No wonder Paul told the certain disciples. When he met them, he says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? The point is that belief by itself is not enough. Because if you put all your confidence in your belief in God, then what you're going to do is it becomes a mental condition. It becomes a mental habit. Huh? It becomes, it becomes a mental process. So if you're not careful, you're only going to be saved in your mind. So when troubles come, when dilemmas come, you can't draw from power and resources because you don't have the, the, the power within you to do anything about that. Is anybody with me here? Just trying to get you to see what it takes, what does spiritual success look like? All right? It's not based on just things, but there's a, there's a the system. The bottom line of it is you just cannot believe in God. You have got to believe God. All right. Believing in God and believing God is two different things, because when you believe God, that means you have to take God at his word. You have to put your confidence in the testimony of God, especially when there's no material evidence for you to work off of. There's no logical proof. There's material evidence, but you've got to stand on the testimony of God. All right. Then what is the system? What is his system? All right. How do we find it? Well, the system is of those who can see God's hands in everything can leave everything in God's hands. Did you hear that? Can I say that again? Those who can see God's hands in everything can leave everything in God's hands. So with that thought in mind, let's take a closer look at the text. Let me come down with you. 
Let's take a closer to, sis, look at the text. Sister, Sister Paulette, oh, I tell you, that's all right. Who's got, who's, you got it? Start off with that scripture again, verse 5. Proverbs 3. So, trust in the Lord. Yes. Okay, let's stop there and take a peek at that. Trust in the Lord. This is the system. This is what it looks like. When you put everything in God's hands, it means you have to trust him. All right? You have to put trust in him. All right? So, and what, what else does it say? So, trust means is that when you put everything in God's hands, then what you got to do is you got to sit down. You got to sit. I'll show you in a moment. You got to sit. Once you trust God, once you give it to him, you let him keep it. So what you do is once you give it to him, you can come sit. This is trust. Trust is not what you do. Trust is not trying to work it out. Trust is just sitting on the testimony of God. All right? That's why he says later, leaning not, what? Look at what happens when I lean. Here's trust. But, but what's happened when I'm leaning? I'm putting my trust. I'm trying to get assistance. And I keep getting further away from it because I'm leaning on my thoughts my judgments, my understanding, what I'm feeling to think would do. I'm trying to get out of the problem. I don't know how I got in here. I don't know how to get out. So I am working so hard, spending time, spending energy, which becomes a spiritual sanity, trying to work out of my problem when all I've been asked to do is trust him. That means just sit and let him work it out. Let me tell you something. How many of us have been going through tests and trials and you've asked yourself the question, where is God? Am I in the right place? Has anybody as spiritual as we are, as much veterans as we, hey, look, even, even the great fishermen was put into a situation where they were used to any type of gale, any type of a bad weather, but they were put into a test that even they feared for their lives, that they had to wake Jesus up and say, do you care if we perish? These were veterans. These, these have been people who say, I'm trying to tell you every once in a while, we can be put into a situation, we don't know whether we're coming or whether we're going, and we say, God, where are you? Well, let me tell you something. When he wants us to trust, you just go ahead and sit down because the bottom line of it is the, the, God is administering the test. A test is going forth, and in, in the natural sense, what does an administrator do when they're conducting a test? They're silent. They're walking around. They're keeping an eye on the situation. They want to make sure that everything is working well, all right? They just want you to focus on the task. They don't want you talking to your neighbor. <laughs> they don't want you looking over on the type of, pay of the page trying to find an answer. But they're there to sit and to watch you because, see, we're overcomers, and he's the overseer of the overcomer. So even though you can't see him, it's because he's off to the side studying and waiting. He's going to talk to you when the test is over. Now, sometimes... The test gets crazy. You want to get up and you want to get out of it. But because he's in control of it, he's the monitor. It is the monitor that says, time's up. So regardless to what your situation is, if you put your trust in him, he'll stop it. He's got control of it. It's got, a, it's got an expiration date on it. It will stop what he says, enough. When the sea was going so great and those brothers didn't know what to do, it was him, the, 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 the person who was in the ministry test said, peace, be still. All right? So what we've got to learn to do is just sit. Give it to him and watch him do what he does because we're going to have to recognize and to embrace we serve a God that is awesome with his power. All right. So when he says put something into his hands, you got to know what kind of hands he's got. Make sense. What happens when when they think you're about to die? 
What happens when the doctor says they don't know what more they can do? They'll tell you uh, right now they're in the hands of God. Now that's when they finally put it in his hands. When they've done all that they can do. You hear what I'm saying? So here we are sitting here. And we got to think about those good hands of God. Why, why do I trust him? How can I put my trust in him? Well, let me tell you, there's three critical functions that his hands do that we need to think about for a moment. Is everybody with me? Everybody all right? The first thing, his hands are sovereign. He's got sovereign hands. So the sovereign hands mean that he has supreme rank in order. And because of that, that allows him to control, to control the world, but his hands be free to be involved in every aspect and every detail in the journey that we're going through. He is free to do it. He's got the power. He can perform it. And so you don't have to worry about that because he's sovereign. He's got this. Nothing gets past him. Do you hear what I'm saying? Nothing can get past him. You don't ever have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about him having to come up with a plan B because he's got this under control. And all you have to do is just do what he says. Just take him at his word. If he says nothing, can, no weapon can form can do what to you? So what do you do? Are you trying to battle your enemies? Are you trying to work the things out yourself? Are you rolling your eyes? Are you, are you looking funny? Are you, are, are you trying to get it together? Are you talking to some of your friends and getting allies? Because that's how world wars got started. Friends. Okay. I, I, but you, you see what I'm saying? Are you doing that? Or are you just simply trusting in the Lord and let him handle it? Because he's sovereign. He's got this under control. All right? Not only are his hands sovereign, but his hands are providential. What am I talking about? How do you, how do you, y'all, y'all know when our presidents and all of our great dignitaries, they are, uh, they could be under attack at any time. Is that right? So what they do is they send out an advance detail to get wherever that president is going. And that advanced detail is looking and making sure that everything is in order. And not only that, but they also have a detail that's with him. Everywhere he steps, they step. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? So I'm trying to tell you, because of sin's providential, everybody came to church and you got here safe. You know why? Because God had put out a detail before you got up this morning. He sent the drunken drivers one way. He sent the robbers another. He sent the crazy folks another type of way. Praise God because you were to get here safely because his hands are providential. Your God is protecting you. Legions of angels are following you and around you because you're that so such he much in his eyes. Stop fretting. Stop getting all upset. Stop coming and you can't get into the service because you're worried about the things that you're going through. Just trust. Just trust in the Lord. And let him handle it because he's already checked in advance to make sure you can make it to where you have to go. Also, his hands are overruling. He's got overruling hands. How many times have we done some crazy things in our lives? How many chances have we taken? How many things have we done that we could have been? How many scrapes have we gotten out of? How many things has happened because the adversary wanted to take you out and if he could get away with it, he'd kill you today if he could get away with it. But he can't because our God overrules him. Sometimes he says, take them out because they they're not doing what you want them to do. All right? He says, but if you're a just God, then you got to, you got to give them over to me. But the bottom line of it is, our God has, uh, has overruling hands. So when things get crazy, he's the one that decides. He directs the traffic. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? If we could just take a moment and simply learn how to trust. We could get some rest at night. Trust. We wouldn't have to worry about the very things that are coming forward. Let's just trust. 
Huh? He's got this. He's got it. He's monitoring it. He's got everything under control. And whatever it is you need, it might be a cup of water. He'll bring it. That's again, you whatever you need. Sometimes it's a word. Sometimes it, it, it's if you just just watch and listen and let God do what He's going to do. Everything's going to be all right. This is the formula to spiritual success is putting your trust in the Lord and leaning not on your own understanding. Does it make any sense? All right. What does verse 6 say? In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. if they turned out the lights here in the church. Remember when we had that power outage? Rem remember when we had to just sit still because we couldn't see wh which way to go? And isn't that a terrible feeling? Praise God. Especially, it's one thing in your house, if you know where you're going, you can, do, you can navigate a little bit. But when you're in a situation you don't know where you're going, it is crazy trying to see. It's, 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 it's fearful, right? Well, this is what happens when you trust God. God wants to put you in unfamiliar territory. He wants you to be uncomfortable. <laughs> he wants you to feel inadequate. He wants you to, be, to, to look and to search for something because he wants you to acknowledge him. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm seeing, but I'm looking to acknowledge him. So I'm, I'm waiting on, on a word from the Lord. I don't know where I'm going. I don't want to do. I'm looking. I'm searching. All right. All right. And so then what he does, once I acknowledge that I got some help here, then I'm going to go ahead and let them direct me to the path I have to go. Get me to where I have to go. Put me where that is. Get me to that place where I can get back to the point where I can trust the Lord. It's okay to feel uncomfortable. It's okay to be at your wit's end sometimes. It's okay for you to hold on and be saved just by a string, just by a thumb. That's all right. Just hold on till you can get that trust in the Lord and let him direct your path. In, in closing, I just want to bring your attention to astronauts. Can I do that for a moment? Astronauts, because I'm looking at a room full of spiritual astronauts. But you got to know what your, what your role is. Make sense? Astronauts prepare, train for failure. They train for failure. They prepare for failure. That almost doesn't make sense. But in preparing for failure, that's how they succeed. <laughs> that's how they guarantee success. Am I making sense here a little bit? Because they work out every scenario of anything that could possibly go wrong and they start working on a system on how to manage problems, how to manage dilemmas, how to manage situations. And you know what? They're not alone. They're doing that on their end, but back in Houston, they got a whole team of people that are monitoring their heartbeat, monitoring the situation, checking out to see the atmosphere, how everything's going. They got a whole team working with them to, to prepare for if something goes wrong. You are so blessed as the children of God, you don't have to spend time managing. You don't have to spend time figuring out how you're going to work this out. You don't have to worry about about a whole team of people and somebody may be sick that day and not make it. All you got to do is just trust in the Lord. He'll work it out. He'll manage it. He'll fix it. Hallelujah. Just like he did for the men and women in the word of God in past. That's what the Bible's there for. That's what he, Listen, them Hebrew brothers, there's nothing they could do for, you, for, 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 for themselves. They were in their thing and they had to act. 
the word was breathed so that you can see how we're supposed to react when we're faced with it. We, they said, at one time they said, if our God, we're, we're going to follow our God, but if he doesn't deliver us, we're still not going to stand. Now that kind of sounds like they're doing some double talk. That they're doing some double talk. They say yeah, he could do it, but if not, doesn't that sound like it? You know, does it not? But that's not what it means at all. All they were saying is, yeah, our God is able to deliver us, but whether he does or not is up to him. So what they did was they just trust in the Lord. They just sat down and said, do what you will. Okay, go ahead and put us in that furnace. Do whatever you're going to do. We are not going to bow. I'm telling you all in the word of God, the word of God is to inspire us and to encourage us and to make things come alive in us because we are so such a much to God. And all your job today is, all your commission to do today is, is just simply trust. Is there anybody ready to sit in the chair? It says trust in. That means you got, to, this is the posture. You got to be in something. So you got to sit. You, that means you have to stay in the place because if you get up and move anywhere else, you're not in the seat of trust. So you can't get up. You can't move around. You got to stay in this place. Even when things are crazy, you got to wait it out. You got to wait it out in God. And when you do it, I guarantee you spiritual success. Yeah. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Hmm? Yeah. And lean not on thy own understanding. Acknowledge him what? Oh. And what will he do? God bless you and keep you. Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Stop looking at what you think is right. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And God will direct your path. Oh, what a...